Hello, my name is Zero, and welcome to Space Engineers. In the last video we covered the basics of the game and how to get started in survival. Whilst you don't need to watch that video, if at any point you are confused, please click the link in the top of the description or click the eye in the top right to see a full playlist of tutorials. So, why do we need to build a rover? Why don't we just build a ship? So far we've been mining stone and stone can be turned into three basic resources of iron, nickel and silicon. In order to progress in survival and build better blocks like thrusters for ships, we're going to need to go out in the world and find ores. Ores can be found underground or can be mined for much more resources than you get for refining stone. Additionally, there are ingots that we need that can only be found from ores, such as cobalt, which we need to build many of the more advanced blocks to progress. Rovers, on the other hand, can be built cheaply and can be used to transport ourselves around without wasting jetpack fuel and can also be outfitted with storage to move things like materials and ore back and forth. Most importantly, we can equip our rover with an ore detector, which will allow us to detect ores in a much greater radius than you can with a basic drill. We're going to need to mine a lot of stone in order to get the materials to build the rover, so it'll be worth investing in better tools. Now, whilst we can't build the upgraded welder and grinder because they require cobalt and all we don't have access to yet, the enhanced drill is available to us as it only requires the base game resources. If you go to production and assemble, you can switch from here to components to tools and you can see all the tools you have available to us so you click drill and it will give you the upgraded drill and if you click inventory you can then drag that drill into your inventory and then if you press G like when you get with blocks if you just search for drill you can then see the drill in the list and then you can drag it onto the hotbar to replace your original drill this drill will mine faster and a bigger area than the original drill making your life much easier when mining the first thing we need to place on our rover is a landing gear Landing gears stick to surfaces, locking vehicles in place. We don't actually need the landing gear when the rover is finished, as we can achieve the same thing using wheels. However, we will need it to keep the rover in place while we're building it, and we will also need to weld it up in order to go lock the progression for wheels. Now that I've placed the frame of my vehicle, I now start adding wheels to it. If I press G on the keyboard and search wheels, you'll see I've got a load of wheels. Don't be daunted by this. What you need is the wheel suspension right, and the wheel suspension left. Now the size technically doesn't matter, uh, but as we all know bigger is better, so I'm going to put the size 5x5 wheels on my vehicle. So as you can see you've got left and right, so I've got this is the left wheel, so I want to place this on the left side of the vehicle. Well, this is going to be the front, so this is the, so the, if I'm facing this way, this is the left, so I'm going to place that there. And you see it didn't place the wheel, that was because I was in the way of it, so I'm going to grind it off. You can spawn the wheel later if you did accidentally do that, but just for convenience sake I'm just going to remove it and re-add it. So now by right clicking with my welder, I can add those two blocks to the build planner, middle click to pull the materials out. And there we go, there's our first wheel. Just got to place three more and I'll be done. And there we go, we've got four wheels on our rover. In order to get this rover working though, we will need a couple more things. And we'll also need a way of connecting this rover to the base so we can pull resources out of it and also charge the rover. We're going to start by working on a way to connect the rover to the base. If you press G, search cargo, and grab a medium cargo container, put it on your hotbar, and also don't forget to middle click to add it to your build queue. Middle click to pull the resources out. We can't get two construction components, so shift middle click, add it into the production. I want to place this at the end of my rover, so that when I put my connector on, it can connect to the base. I want the big yellow side at the end, because that will connect to the connector, but I'll show you that in a minute. And there you go, one medium cargo container. Next, I want a connector, but unfortunately, in order to build a connector, I need to build a conveyor. That's fine as I'll need to build a conveyor to connect to the base, so we'll do that now. Press G, search conveyor, and drag this conveyor junction onto your hotbar. This will allow you to switch between all the different types of conveyors. Conveyors are a bit like pipes. For example, if I use the scroll wheel, I can switch between the different types. So I've got a regular pipe, I've got a junction which is all six directions, and I've got a curved one that allows me to change the angle. It looks like my rover is going to be around the two block height, so I want to have a connector at the two block height as well. However, as this side of the base is slightly lower down, I'm going to place it over here. So I'm going to place my junction, and I'm going to weld it up for the progression. There you go, build and conveyor junction as unlock new blocks, and I'm going to proceed to grind it down because I don't need it. Search for connector, drag it onto the hotbar. I'm going to place mine here. I'm going to weld it up. There you go, we have our connector on the base. We also need to put a connector on our ship. So you can see on the other side of the connector, we've got a yellow square. That yellow square needs to line up on the yellow square on the back of the cargo container, so they line up, so place it there. There you go, we have a connector on the end of the rover. But that means that we'll be able to connect the connector on the base the connector on the rover in order to charge the rover and in order to transfer items between the rover and the base. Now that we have storage sorted on the rover, we now need to think about power. All power blocks in Space Engineers can be split into two categories, power generators and power storage. Power storage is simple, press G and search for battery. The only method of storing power in the game is the two batteries. These batteries are for small ships and these are for large. Don't really recommend using small batteries, but it's going to use large. So I'm going to add two to my build queue just for weight balance purposes and then drag it onto my hotbar. I'm just going to place them on the side of my rover like this. And these two batteries will provide more enough power storage for this vehicle. However, in order to charge these batteries, we will need to connect them to the base over here. But luckily, the batteries start with a little bit of power to start with. And as we don't really have anything on the ship, we should be able to use that little bit of power to position the rover to connect to that connector. Next thing we need to place on our vehicle is a cockpit. 
You search cockpit in the menu. You can see there are several types of cockpit. I'm just going to pick the basic one, put it on my hotbar, make sure small ship selected, and then add it to my build planner. And there you go, we have our cockpit welded up. You can see on the bottom right that we haven't actually put 30 bulletproof glass into the cockpit, although it is fully functional. If you see on the right, we have a line that says functional. If you weld up above that point, the block is actually functional, but it doesn't have its full HP. So because we haven't put the 30 bulletproof glass in, it's only at 43% of its HP. If we were to get that bulletproof glass, we could take it to 100 HP, but at the moment it's just a waste of resources if we don't need it to be 100 HP to be functional. We'll come back to the cockpit in a minute, so we can use that to configure our vehicle. But there are still a few more things we need to place on the vehicle before we can consider it complete. We press G and search gyroscope, you should see a gyroscope. Make sure you've got a small grid selected in the top right, and middle click to add it to your build planner, and then drag it onto your hotbar. We only need one gyroscope, but I am just going to place two on this rover for symmetry reasons. Gyroscopes will allow you to rotate your ship in all directions. So whilst you can use the wheel, rotate the wheels to turn, which we'll look at later on, gyroscopes can be allowed to turn your ship horizontally. For example, if you needed to maneuver yourself in midair and get your wheels aligned with the ground, if you were on a slope, for example, you could use the gyroscopes to do that. We'll look at them more in detail when the rover's finished and we're actually driving it around. But for now, just know that whilst these aren't technically required, it will make your life a hell of a lot easier. The last two things I want to place on the rover are an antenna and an ore detector. Before we can build an antenna, however, we need to build a beacon. We have an antenna on our original ship, however, we won't be able to build the antenna until we've built a beacon. The same goes for the ore detector, which is also on our ship. Beacons broadcast their position to players that are nearby. So, for example, with this beacon here, if I were to fly away, you'd be able to still see the beacon. Uh, if I were to get into the cockpit, I could be able to rename the beacon, but I don't actually want a beacon. I actually want an antenna. Antennas are very similar to beacons, except they have two-way communication. The antenna can be used to transmit to the player information from other grids. For example, with if the antenna here, if I would connect the ore detector, I'll be able to see ores that are nearby the rover. Now that I've built the antenna, I can also build the ore detector. Ore detectors, as you can imagine, are used to find ores nearby. This will be the main function of the rover as we'll be using it to drive around the world finding ores. And then we'll use the storage of the rover to store the ores in order to bring them back to our base. Whilst the drill does come with a built-in ore detector, the range on it is much less than the ore detector itself, which is 50 meters. Now that we've placed everything on our rover, it's now time to get to configuring it. If you go up to the cockpit of the rover and press F, you'll get inside of it. By pressing Alt, you can move your head around and you'll be able to see around you. If you press V, you can go into third person and then using Alt to position the camera and then the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You will be able to get in much closer than this, but the base is in the way preventing me from zooming in. As you can see in the bottom right, we have 16 hours of power left. So that lets us know we have 16 hours to get the rover connected to the base. I think we'll have it done before then though. Press K, you can see all of the blocks that you can configure in the grid. For example, if I go to the antenna, I can see all the settings I can configure for the antenna. For example, if I wanted to change what the antenna said, I could click in HUD text and put zero rover in. And now if I press V, I'll be able to see it now says zero rover. I can also configure the broadcast range, but as you can see on the right, making the broadcast range bigger makes it use more power. And as we want to save power currently, and as I don't think I'll be going 50,000 meters away from the base, I'm going to make sure this is like 5,000. If you hold control and click any bars in the UI of Switch Engineers, you can configure them precisely. So I'm going to set this back to 5,000. At this point, the only two things we need to configure in this menu are the range of the order sector, which you should set the max in order to detect doors further away, and the wheels. Now, what we want to configure on the wheels is we want to turn steering off the back wheels. Because as you can imagine, we don't want to be turning the back wheels while we're driving along as that's not how a real car works. It's going to be a little difficult to see. What we're going to, what we're going to do is I'm going, to, I'm going to press Alt and turn my head slightly to the right, press K to open up the menu and go to the wheels, and I can see that I've got my two left wheels and they're called 1 and 2. By scrolling through the menu, I right down to the bottom and I've got steer override, I'm going to turn this to the max. As you can see, my front left wheel has turned, so now that I know that left one is a front wheel, so I'm going to set back that steering wheel override to zero by pressing control, and then I'm going to keep steering on that one, and I'm going to scroll up, and then I'm going to put front on the end of its name. I'm going to scroll down here, take this out and put back, and I'm going to turn off steering by unticking the box. I'm going to turn my head to the right to look at my front wheel. I believe if I place the front wheel last, so if I turn the steering override on right three, I should see that that's one moved, so I'm going to go back, scroll down, turn off the steering override, rename it to right front, rename the other one to back, and turn off steering. Controls of the rover are using Plaster to move. As you see, if I press A and D on the keyboard, you can see that the front wheels are moving. Right now that the rover's configured, I'm gonna take out the landing gear so that the rover sits on the ground. And now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna drive the rover. And you can see while I'm driving, I've got an hour of power. Using Wazda on my keyboard, I can turn. Now I've got a very, very, very wide turning angle. But I'm gonna use this to realign myself with the base, which is easier said than done. I think I need to turn down the speed of my wheels, so I'm going to press K to go to the control panel. I'm going to click on the top wheel and then hold shift and click the bottom wheel. That will select all the wheels and allow me to change all the controls at once. I'm then going to turn down the power on the wheels to 35 and this should allow me to have more fine control over my wheels, which is good. If you press P, it'll put the handbrake on and prevent the wheels from moving. Now I do have a slight problem. 
I'm not the right height for my connector, but that's fine. If I press K, go to my top wheel, press Shift, and I hold the set to the bottom one, I can I should be able to change the height. And adding that little look, bit of extra height is giving me just enough height to connect to the base. When the connector goes yellow, that means it's ready to connect. And then if I press P, you'll see that it's gone green and now we're connected. I can press F to access the inventory of, the, of my connector. So example, you can see this is my inventory. This is connector. I can drag things into this connector. What I can also do, if I search for a small cargo container, I can see that this is the cargo container of the base. And I can drag materials directly into this cargo container. And by clicking so connective inventories and searching for one of the medium cargo containers on the ship, I can also drag directly between the cargo containers from the base and the ship. Whilst I'm connected, I also want to charge my batteries. If you go into the cockpit and then press G, you can configure the toolbar of the ship just like you can configure the character. However, as I'm connected to the base, you can see everything on the base. Oh, I'm going to first disconnect from the base, then park up again. Then I'm going to press G, and then I've just got everything attached to the ship. If I drag one of the batteries onto the hotbar, you can see everything I can set on the press of one. For example, if I set to recharge, you can see that the battery on the right has gone yellow, meaning it's gone into recharge. However, I really want both my batteries to go into recharge at the same time. I'm going to press G, and I'm going to clear that off my hotbar. And then by pressing K, I can see that I've got both my batteries. Press the top battery, press Shift, click the second battery, and I go over to the right where I've got Block Group. Type zero. Zero Rover Batteries, press save, and you'll see I've got a group at the top called Zero Rover Batteries. What I can now do, if I set that to recharge, both of my batteries have gone into recharge, and then if I set them back to both to auto, they've both gone back to auto. What I can also do, if I press G now, and go to groups on the right, I, I can see that ro Zero Rover Batteries is on there. Drag that down, I can enable switch to recharge. If I press P, reverse back, press P again to park, and now press 1 to switch to recharge. Go into here, I can see on one of my batteries, and my batteries will be fully charged in 22 minutes. Whilst I wait for the rover to charge, I'm going to grind down everything in the base and put it inside the rover so that when I get to my new destination, I have everything ready to build my new base. A few moments later. Right, three pips is enough power. I'm sure this will be enough to move. I'm just going to grind down the last few things at the base. I'll probably leave the monolith here just to upset everyone. There you go, so the base is ground down and we're ready to go. So I guess the real question is, what are we looking for? Why are we doing this? So with the ore detector, we're looking to detect ores. We're specifically looking for a certain set of ores. Iron is the most important ore as it's used in pretty much every component. Nickel is also important. It's not used as in, in as many components, but it's the second highest used com in components. So we probably need a source of that. Another important one is cobalt. It's not used in a lot, but it's used in a lot of the next tier of stuff. So we kind of need to get cobalt ticked off. And ice is another important one we need because ice is used to make hydrogen for our jetpack. And most importantly, hydrogen for rocket fuel. So I'm going to drive down the hill a bit until I find somewhere with some ores and I'll show you how it looks. So we found our first ore using the ore detector. In front of us we found ice. Uh, so ice is roughly 20 meters below me here. So I'd obviously have to get my drill out of mine down. I don't need to at the moment because I don't need ice, but this is a good thing to look for. So basically they appear on your thing like that. And because I've got the antenna, it's broadcasting to me. So I can see where the ice is up to 50 meters away from the rover. If, if I didn't have the antenna on, I'd have to be quite probably this close with the drill to see it. But obviously we're not just looking for ice. We want our base nicely situated near all of them. Also use the opportunity where I've got the rover to explain some of the additional controls other than just using Gwazda. If you hold X while in your rover. Oh my f***ing God. <laughs> Oh no. Ooh. You can do that. If you hold X, you can see that the suspension goes right down to the bottom. And then when you release, you do a bit of a jump in the air. This can be used to getting over obstacles or around obstacles. Or as you just saw, flying miles into the air and then panicking as you uh, descend slowly to the ground through imminent doom. If I jump again, you can see that if I press Q, I lean slightly to the left. If I press E, I lean slightly to the right. This is due to my gyros. For example, if we were drove over a cliff, like I'll demonstrate now, I can use Q and E to orientate myself so I don't flip over. And here I think I've found the perfect location for a base. I've got cobalt below me, I've got ice right next to it, and I've got iron, and more ice. I think anything under snow is ice. You can see we've come quite a long way from where our original base was. In the description of this video is a link to the spreadsheet with all information about all the ores in the game, a list of how much ingot is required to build each component, and how many of each ingot and component are used to build each block used in this series. I will continue to update the spreadsheet as the tutorial series continues, so please keep checking back to it. Between videos, I'll get the new base ready to show off the upgraded refiner and assembler, and we'll begin working on our first mining ship.